This cup is huge. What? Are you serious, Seattle? Wow. This is a big cup. And I've been drinking all week Seattle's Best Coffee. And I, you know what? It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Speaking of coffee, Sunday night, August the 28th at 6 p.m. at the Cheesecake Factory in the South Center Mall at 6 p.m., Heidi and I, my wife and I, will be meeting with everyone that shows up for a Bible Prophecy Coffee Conference. Impromptu, never planned it, wasn't scheduled, we're on vacation, but people found out we're here and started saying, can we meet you for coffee, can we meet you for coffee, I live in Washington. And now I have 12 subscribers who have confirmed they're coming and bringing spouses and family with them, so it's unreal. So I've got a hold of the Cheesecake people and told them, I said, I need, I need room. I'm looking at now maybe 2025, 20, maybe 30. I don't know. So it's going to be a powerful time. And we are going to come to six major cities next year. I'm hearing you people. Some of you want me to come to Texas. I've heard Austin, Texas. I've heard Tulsa, Oklahoma. Somebody wants me to come to Hartford, Connecticut. There's people want me up there in New, New Hampshire. I've been asked to come to Philadelphia. There's folks that want me to somewhere in Nebraska, some dinky town, California, Florida, North Carolina, I don't know how we're going to, we're going to pray, pray, pray and find the right spot geographically to help as many subscribers as possible to attend one of these Bible prophecy coffee conferences in the name of the Lord. Okay, I want to talk about Hurricane Irene. It is right now just beating up North Carolina. It is tearing the flood surge I just seen where there's 40 foot waves near the tip of North Carolina, and also there's uh, five and six foot water completely overtaking the roads or shutting down two major highways. We're just getting started with this storm. I have been praying, and I'm sorry, I was praying yesterday in that prayer. I forgot the people in Delaware. I forgot the people in Connecticut. I'm sorry, and I, of course, I'm praying for you and New Hampshire. I'm praying for New England. I'm praying for all of you, all of you along the East Coast. And my wife and I had special prayer again last night late. Let me just read to you from the word of the Lord to comfort you. This is Psalms chapter 77, verse 14. The word says, You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. You have with your arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you. And they were afraid. The depths also trembled. The clouds poured out water. The sky sent out a sound. Your arrows also flashed about. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. The lightnings, the voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind, in the hurricane. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea, your path in the great waters, and your footsteps were not known. That's why they can't predict where this hurricane exactly is going to go. It could hang a right. It could hang a left. I said, I said yesterday, Irene, hang a left. I meant hang a right. Go back out to sea. I'm sorry. I was corrected on that. Do you see what I'm trying to tell you? You can't guide a hurricane. You can't direct where it's going to go. God is in the hurricane. God is in the thunder. God is in the lightning. But why is God bringing this upon America? The earthquake that hit Washington, hit Virginia and, and rattled Washington, D.C., knocking those three crosses off the top of the National Cathedral Church, putting a crack in the Washington Memorial and shutting it down, breaking the bowels of the water pipes within the Pentagon and knocking off the artwork of the Capitol. Why did God send that quake as a precursor to the Hurricane Irene or the Hurricane of Peace in the Greek? Let's read the scriptures. Would you go with me to Psalms chapter 148? Let me read to you verse 8. Fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Say it again. Fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind, 
fulfilling his word. Turn if we stay right here. Go to Proverbs. I want to read to you from chapter 10. I'm going to start reading at verse 24. Listen to the word of the Lord. Listen to the word of the Lord. America, repent. I got information today from Stephen of Oklahoma that the, the, the National Breast Cancer Foundation gave 500. Let me see how much was that again. Hang on. 500. And $69,159 to Planned Parenthood. What? The National Breast Cancer Foundation, the Susan G. Coleman Foundation, where many of you have given for cancer research, for breast cancer research, they turned around and gave Planned Parenthood over $569,000. Why did they do it? Well, they say it was to help fund cancer uh, low, low income people to have some screen, some pre-cancer screen. But look, we don't want any money going to Planned Parenthood. We've got, you can give it, there's a ton of different people you can give it to that can do low cancer, uh, low income cancer screening. Don't give it to the baby killers. Don't give it to the Planned Parenthood. This is part of why America has to repent. The 60 million abortions, the hatred of Israel, the turning it back and trying to divide the land. The Bible says in Zechariah chapter 9 verse chapter 12 verse 9 the Lord seeks to destroy every nation that comes against Jerusalem. Read it in the word. Let's read here. This is Proverbs chapter 10. I'm going to start reading at verse 24. The fear of the wicked will come upon him. And the desire of the righteous will be granted, praise the Lord. And when the whirlwind passes by, the wicked is no more. But the righteous has an everlasting foundation. That is why we were praying yesterday. I wasn't praying, God, turn the storm away. Because after I went to the Lord in prayer, the Lord said to me, Paul, I'm bringing the storm. I'm in the storm and I'm bringing a sign of repentance. America must repent. I am bringing the storm. It's going to affect millions of people. will be out of power. There will be destruction. I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying for safety. He's And the Lord specifically told me, preach the word. Tell the sinner to repent of his sins and get saved. Ask him today as the waters are troubled, uh, as he comes up the Potomac River toward Washington, D.C., as it heads directly toward New York City and all of the coast. Pray that they repent of their sins. Because he said, I will protect the righteous. My word says it. When the whirlwind passes by, the wicked is no more, but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. Are you saved? Are you saved? Now listen to me. I can't stop the storm, but I can pray for your protection. If you're a child of God, I'm praying. Now look, your power might go out, ma'am. You, the, the, look, the wind may break a couple windows. Your roof might lose some, uh, might even lose the shingles. Your car might get drowned it. The, the storm surge may destroy part of the lower land areas of every state up the East Coast. But I'm praying for protection for those who serve the Lord. I'm praying for everybody. Even if you're not saved, of course. I want you to be saved. I want you to be safe. I don't want anyone. And the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have life everlasting. Father, help them send the Holy Spirit right now. There's a call for repentance in the name of Jesus. Send me a personal message right now on this YouTube channel, on my personal inbox, and just title it, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. Do it now in Jesus' name. Do it now in Jesus' name. Hosea says, we've sown to the wind. We've reaped the whirlwind. Do it now in Jesus' name. I'll be back. We're going to have a powerful day today. I got more to talk about as Hurricane Irene comes upon the nation. God bless each and every one of you. Be saved today.